camera. Welcome to the Three Beards Podcast. My name's Craig. Alongside me, as always, Chris and Austin. How are you guys tonight? We are doing wonderful. Awesome. Ah, since we last spoke, we're talking about ghosts. Austin, how goes it in Haunted House Manor there? Nothing yet. Got my recorder, just in case something happens. Haven't felt anything yet, so... All right, we gotta check, keep checking on you. We don't want you bolting in the middle of the program. <laughs> You'll know because the door is right there, right there behind yeah. me. So I leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know something happened. Yeah, so nothing yet. Good. Well, tonight we are talking about mermaids, mermaids, merfolk, and sirens. Are they the perils of the sea or bringers of fortune and good omens? So, do we believe in mermaids? Yes. Thumbs up, yes. Send out our stuff real quick. Uh, we live. So why? So why? What <laughs> makes you such a believer of that the, that a being is able to live in the ocean, swim around, and occasionally come up and snatch a sailor and drag him to his death? They are magical creatures. That's why. I mean, you know, they're they're beautiful young ladies. You know. <laughs> it's just a simple fact, man. Like I talked to my sister. I think you, man. It. There is so much of space and so much of the ocean that we have not explored. There's, it, it's possible. I mean, we're still discovering brand new creatures in the ocean. You know, it, it you cannot tell me that there's not going to be, you know. And it comes back to the same thing with the evolutionary theory. I was trying to look up the, you know, that the old 2011 um, video, the, the body found, the mermaids. Yeah. People have said it's fake. And I was trying to research the two doctors and people, they said it's fake, kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because I really like that documentary. If it is fake, whatever, but it's just, it's just, dude. <laughs> oh, I remember it's, it was one of those, you know, it was, it was always set there like, you know, you getting to the end, we're going to reveal, you see it, and it's this grainy image. You're like, yeah, no. I wanted to see. And everyone said it's a fake, fake video, obviously. You know, but we, it, have, we have no true evidence, but still, yeah. it's the perfect evolutionary theory of it you know hello nancy how are you welcome to the program um it's the perfect evolutionary theory man i love that because it pretty much depicts the evolutionary theory of we came from apes half the apes stayed on the land half the apes decided to venture off and to find the fish and and go into other areas i mean it's just simple that's why i'm a firm believer in the evolutionary theory man it's just Mm -hmm. plain simple you know (laughs) like now it's, um, like I said, through the research, like I was finding, um, I don't know if you guys found this one, that the earliest known story takes place back in ancient Assyria. It takes place around 1000 BC. The story begins with the goddess um, Atargatis, who mm-hmm. fell in love with a mortal being, a shepherd. Yep. And, you know, after falling in love, causes ends up causing his death. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. due, and due to the... This, um, Distress, you know, the sorrow she feels for this, the shame for killing us. She casts herself into the into the lake, and at that point, point she transforms herself into a fish. But the water but, cannot both contain her beauty, mm-hmm. and so what she decides to do is become half fish, half half human. Yeah, you know, and so that like I said and that was that's that one of the first tales known in, in a thousand BC. So like I said this isn't like this is a modern modern tale of you know wooden oh, ships you know coming over you know with settlers to the new world this was this is going back i mean way way back in history even even christopher columbus uh documented a sighting of a mermaid that's what you know when it comes to mermaids everyone assumes it's just beautiful creature you know that's what people want because you got to think man when they, everyone came from europe to america they've been on the ships for god knows how long so they're, they're imagining these beautiful women and like people think it could be like the manatee or the dugong or whatever it is but I, i'm sorry i don't see manatees in the middle of the pacific ocean i don't, I don't see it they're, they're closer to land you know and i can see where they get it but again we have not explored the ocean enough. And this is back, you know, they they see these creatures and they're like, oh, it looks like a beautiful woman because it's just, they want to see that. Um, but I don't know if you got more on that, Craig, when it came to the different um, parts of the world that how they believe in um, the mermaid. 
and like you said that, and then what is now northern Iraq. Um, no, I'm sorry, that's the one you read. Um, the Greece, the Greece um, story is that the sister of Alexander the Great became a mermaid upon her death, um, and she ended up in the Agon Sea. Um, and every time a ship came by, she asked if uh, Sir Alexander the Great is still alive. And, it's, and she, every time, like, yes, he's still alive, she made the, the uh, seas as calm as possible so the sailors could pass right through. So that was pretty cool on the Greece side of it. Um, and Tara, give this a second. This is going to get some crazy stories here. So, you know, don't give up on this one yet. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Crazy. Of all the things that I know you believe, yeah. Tara, this is one you have to believe. And I, don't, <laughs> I don't believe you're not. Yeah, so we, we may tie this into an Atlantean. So this, with the Chinese, they believe yeah. that they could apparently knit valuable material that was white as frost but could never be wet. And fishermen who were sought who sought out to hunt the mermaids were sought out as negative because why are you killing something with such beauty, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not I don't want to offend anybody. What probably happened? But what the hell is up with the Japanese man? They're always kill. Uh, I'm sorry. They're always trying to kill the ma whales. They're killing everything mammals. And even back into there, they 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 look at ma uh, mermaids as grotesque. And, and not beautiful. They look at it as just a human head on a fish body. You yeah. know, and it's like, but when I was when I was reading this, it made no sense is apparently if you eat the flesh of a mermaid, you have immortality. But, immortality. At, the time, but at the same time, yeah. if you catch a mermaid, you'll have bad luck. You just said why then I go, because, you know, Asian culture, they're always taking stuff for, you know, grinding it up into different potions for some, you know, medicine, some type of potion right. stuff. You know, it would stand to reason. And, you know, if you're gonna get immortality, heck yeah, dry that mer mermaid out, grind it into powder, it's put it in my tea. And I'm, you know, like they said, if one ever washed up on their shore, it was a sign of a bad omen of a, of a war. Or yeah, uh, mermaids. Mermaids was often considered a bad omen when it was spotted by a sailor yeah. at sea. It usually meant that the voyage was headed for trouble. So I guess I see why sailors didn't really like mermaids. I mean, I don't know if it was because they were drunk and just having bad visions, but it said, I mean, I could imagine a bunch of drunk sailors on a cruise ship figuring, oh, we see the mermaid. This, 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 um, the voyage is bad. Yeah. So they just had something to blame it on. At that point, you throw that guy overboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, like the, the Britain version, it says is the, they used to drag the, the, um, the sailors underwater. And it was, you know, uh, it could have been like the, the mermaids are bad or they didn't realize that the humans can't breathe underwater and they're just trying to seduce them. You know what I mean? So it's up in the air, but, you know, I, well, I believe, man, because I, one day, you know, I'm going to go out there and find one <laughs> just no, because it's such a vast, the ocean well, is so beautiful, man. You know, getting, you know, past like the, you know, just, you know, the crazy, you know, it's like, eh, I'm not sure. I mean, the thing is, you know, you know, a lot of ancient cultures, you know, yeah, they, they didn't have a lot of the scientific stuff. So there's thing, some things, you know, you couldn't explain. So you had to come up with a supernatural thing. Yeah. But when you're, when you're starting out, uh, you know, a thousand years, you know, BC and going through now, because um, as I went through the research, like ancient Persians, they accounted stories of, of constantly encountering seafaring folk that would come out of the water. Yeah. They would look just like you and me, but they would live under the water. And so yeah. this was, they didn't have scales. They didn't have fins. It was just basically, you know, like a gill. Or, you know, I, they didn't even really go into detail. They had gills. It's just that we would talk. We'd say, and all of a sudden, eh, we're going to head home. Splash. They're in the water. And they're yeah. All right. Well, hey, it was a good barbecue. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and then, you know, a little later on, like went through the, you know, you move forward in time. Through the research, you get to the British Isles back in 1078. There's Saxon stonemasons who have carved a mermaid in up in a capital that's up on top yeah. of a south south facing pillar. Yeah, and it's it's right here. And then, you know, a few hundred years later, there's also a, it's in Saint Sennera's Church in Zinor Church Town in Cornwall, mm -hmm. England. Um, it features a chair known as the Mermaid Chair. Yeah, like I said it's thought to be about at least six hundred years old, and it was made to tell the tale of a mermaid who sw swam up into the waters, and would listen 
to a choirist oh. named uh, Matthew um, Trawalla. And after falling in love with his singing, they would constantly meet, sing together. They fell in love and went to a Pindor Cove, which is about 1.6 kilometers northwest of Zinor, where it said, like on midsummer you know, evenings, that you can hear the singing of these two still. Hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's tales, you know, and as, as you keep going on, it's just, you look at it, it's like, you know, because I used to always say, when you hear mermaids, all right, you know, pirate, you know, some guy on a ship, drink, toss yeah. him back to rum. He sees, he sees a manatee out in the water. He thinks it's a mermaid, falls overboard. And the story is that Smith, um, that Smithers, you know, Smithers was taken by a mermaid when actually he was drunk and fell overboard. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, as I was doing this research, I'm starting to look at it and it's like, you know, do I believe it's a half human, half fish, that, you know, creature walking around? I don't know, but it's also, I mean, what if it's, a, like you said, evolution-wise, what if it is a primarily fish, you know, or aquatic-based creature that yeah. has humanoid features? You know, that could be down there. I mean, we don't know. I mean, do you realize how cool that would be I, to be an exhibit at SeaWorld? We <laughs> captured the first mermaid. Do you realize how many people would come to SeaWorld? I mean, they need to dress a human up as a mermaid and stick him up underwater. That's some bad. oxygen. And be like, we got a <laughs> That's a good marketing idea. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to. I was talking to her mom about it. You know, it's like we don't, she doesn't want to discover any like oil rig or, you know, oil something in an area that we haven't discovered yet because we messed that up. Now we're just hurting creatures. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I want to discover new things, but at the same time, I don't want to bring them into our world and ruin that because you see what's happening to the animals we have now in our zoos. You know, they're just, I, yeah. If you want to go see them, dude, Google dolphin tours, whale tours. Just don't, don't go. I'm, SeaWorld is not going to be able to be a sponsor, so please. I, I love SeaWorld. <laughs> I, I love it, but I, I'm not a fan of SeaWorld. I love yeah. the animals, but you're just holding them captive. I'm not a fan of that. And I don't want to discover a mermaid or if it does ever happen and be like, oh, look, we have a mermaid. We're just taking it from his family. You know, I don't. No, oh, man. No. Nah. <laughs> the Epstein, t you know, questions well, are prevalent. Which no. <laughs> The no, it's not this. You know, I kind of teased it with Tara a little bit there. I mean, one theory, you know, and I've I've held this, this kind of, you know, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the mermaid thing for just a second. I've never believed that we are the only civilization that's ever lived on this planet. And if you do that, you're just wrong. No, I... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, because I just... I'm, I, I've, through some of the stuff that I've seen, um, and we'll get into this you know, a lot later, but there, I have a book behind me. It's called Forbidden Archaeology. They have found in layers, which, you know, date back to, you know, the Jurassic, you know, and before that, they found a seashell with a perfectly laser engraved smiley face. Wow. That was discovered in this. So, I mean, there's absolutely no way to where it was found. There's no way that somebody could just go in, place it, and then come back with somebody like ha, ah, i fooled them because yeah. it was dug up right next to other you know other fossils yeah you know so it, you know like i said so you know coming back towards the mermaids so what if one of these civilizations you know since we don't have you know you can go back and this is where i tease terror about the atlanteans what if it was some civilization like this cataclysmic thing was coming to this planet either a magnetic you know flip you know yeah, something, you know, where you have meteor strikes, just something. What if this this civilization found a way to, you know, some of them found a way to live underwater? And that's what we're seeing nowadays is a civilization that actually hit themselves under undersea and they've just lived their lives. But occasionally we encounter them. I mean, I shared that video. I'll share it on our page here a little bit just so everybody can check it out and see. You know, I'm. I don't know if it's real. It's on it animal real. animal planet. It looks right. really cool because you see this webbed kind of hand thing just all of a sudden just come up and just go smack on the window and then swim away. Was that? 
that a mermaid? Was that a merfolk? Was that somebody that, you know, just they, they just encountered it by accident? Or was it a hoax? But, I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm a firm believer. There's got to be something out there. Something in television. The, the ocean. Been real, but, I, dude, <laughs> it's just, it's like me, me, me and you talked about, you know, it. the, the mermaid, it may show itself, but it, when it sees something like that, I don't think it's going to be like, smack the window, hey, what's up, and run away. I think it was, it would have stayed away from it. So, yeah. if the video is real, awesome. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure on it because why would a mermaid who's been hidden for this long suddenly be like, "Hey, it's me"? You know, I, it, it. If it was real, if it was fake, damn good. You know, damn good cinematography or whatever you want to put on it. Oh yeah, it was, I mean, it, it was great acting. I mean, if this is fake, this is amazing acting. I mean, I don't know if you watched that one, Chris. That submersible. No, I didn't look at but it. Like I said, I'll, all right, so I'll, I'll share it, but. You know, so I just through the research, like I said, I, I was kind of leaning towards, you know, because I think you're right. Maybe it was maybe in a way of evolutionary. I mean, maybe this was a divide, divergent. I mean, they they know it's a topic later on that we might talk about. But, the, you know, the eye, you know, in the Saharan desert, they there are there's a few people that are convinced that that is possibly the location of Atlantis. You surprise me every day, man. It pisses me off. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's every day you have other other kind of conspiracy theories that just blows my mind. I'm like, all right, we we, we got to do an episode every week because I want to learn more about this stuff. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, and this uh, one's not a conspiracy theory. This one's actually this is an actual structure that's out there. You you look at the picture, wide, the, you see its rings. Yeah, why you know? I mean, of all things, why would it be the sandiest place of the world? It, it doesn't land us. Well, it's just it's one. It's a natural thing. Like we're overdue for it. The planet mm -hmm. um, magnetic flip. The poles oh, will switch. Oh. And so, oh, what, I, you I, know, I, and what? Obviously, since it's not been in our lifetime, our recorded history, there's no record of this. Mm -hmm. But what if Atlantis? Because the the talk was, you know, the the you know speculation, the talk, you know, that just all this stuff that the Atlanteans were able to harvest the power of the sun. That they actually had, you know, I mean, you've seen like the, if anybody's seen the latest Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, like that, where they're, the movie starts out, they have that powerful batteries. That basically, that's what they think, you know, like the Atlanteans was that type of thing. They had this a massive power source. They were able to do amazing things with the technology that they had, but possibly something like this magnetic flip could have been the thing that destroyed them. Yeah. Because it's something that you can't you can't control. I mean, it's just. I mean, you think if everything we have here now is guaranteed, you know, we are even our life right now is based on north and the south pol polarization. You know, now if that just all of a sudden flips here in Florida, our weather we get, patterns uh, change. Instantly. We could have sub -zero, we, we could have sub zero temperatures. It's gonna snow. Yeah, we become. <laughs> yeah, we become. You know. Are we actually become you know different hemisphere now? Now we're actually the southern hemisphere. So now, oh, so it's so now. so like I said, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, it's just total chaos. Our toilets start flowing the wrong way. Oh God! You know, our world is just wrecked. You know, you know, no, it's just so it's know, not so, gonna yeah. So you know, you think, you know, it's not going to be just suddenly like like you said, you wake up one morning like, oh, that's weird. You know, the water's going the wrong way. No, I mean, you're talking complete destruction of everything that we know. Because everything's built the way it's supposed to, and you flip yep. it upside down. And it's oh, so you think God. like it, so if something like that happened with you know going with this theory of Atlantis, what if these people were you know they had this ability to live underwater? I mean, we just assumed that everything was above land. What if they had vast cities underwater, and just because of this, the upper area was destroyed? So are you telling me people lived my underwater? So are you telling me with my bug out bag, I need to include an oxygen tank in case we ever be underwater. That's my next item for my bug out bag. And a yeah. surgical kit so you can actually put gills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, in the, I don't know why it just popped in my head and it popped me earlier. Um, so do you think that we don't get enough um, evidence of UFOs or – aliens or mermaids or discoveries because every discovery that the like, Saharan desert they're finding bones here and there 
And do you think that we're, never, we're not getting enough evidence is because all these research projects are uh, being funded by the government? So then once they find something, the government's like, oh, thank you, and it takes it, and then we'll never see it. You know, that's a possibility? Yes. I, I, it just popped in my head. I'm thinking, yeah, no, I, I, how come I, we're I, only seeing bits and pieces? There should be some evidence out there. And all of these millions of archaeologists out there digging every day, we got to find something. And you're telling them to find one thing every year? Like, depending on what you dig up, you have to notify the government because it depends on where, where do you find it at. And the government's not going to let discovering stuff go in their muse museum that would potentially yeah. harm their theory. Your mind. Here we go. So there's giant – you guys ever heard of the giant mounds that are all over North America and around the world? No. Yeah, it there's giant to mounds. You've seen them like they're snake – they're like, they're like a snake mound. Um, they're tied back to tribal Indians. Well, the thought is that there was actually a giant race called the Nephilim. They were giants, and they were bloodthirsty, and that the native tribes actually beat them finally, and that those are the burials. Because they're, they're there's many stories out there where people have discovered gigantic human skeletons. I mean, we're talking like you take your head and like times two. You you can't you can't use oxen head because it's kind of big so you have to use maybe mine. That's a little <laughs> but uh, so, so you take you know you take that they're finding this and as soon as they're found these artifacts are taken and they're never seen again. Yeah, so, the government's course, like oh, now big you're going to have you're, yeah you're going to have me. I bring in this giant skull I just found and I'm going to be like, dude, I found this giant skull. Where's the skull? Well, it'll, you know, Smithsonian has it. Well, they say they don't have it, so yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, you're and lying. Just, many of these are found, and it's just so like saying, you know, I, me and Chris, you and me had this discussion, you know, about you know, well, why wouldn't they tell us? Because it's chaos. Because right we're now, in a bubble. Yeah, because right now you have control. I mean, just think about how our lives would change right now if we knew there was an entire aquatic civilization that lived just out there, just offshore. We can your, handle it. Yeah, your whole world would change. We can barely handle the world now. It would. It would just. It, it honestly, would so, it would be it, so chaotic. The evidence would come out, and we would forget about it. The government would would give us the information, and then we forget about it because boom. Sorry, Chris. A brand new Apple Apple product came out, and it's like, oh no, it, the evidence is gone. If that's the world we're living in now, is man, they they they're probably throwing out evidence all the time, and we're just not paying attention. Well, I know it's you know I know it's a movie, but um, did anybody you know anybody that's seen Aquaman? You know they showed one of the scenes My favorite character. was underneath, and they you know and I'm sorry that that's your favorite comic book character. I really need to broaden your horizon. I'm just I'm I'm There's a scene where it shows you know a submarine, and it's you know it ends up engaging with this underwater civilization. You know, there's every now and then, you know, you'll hear stories of a sub that just suddenly, you know, lost, lost control, you know, just saying, and they're doing a, you know, rescue it, mission. It just ran into something. It just ran into, so what, you know, the, like the speculation is, you know, it's kind of like, you know, yep, you know, Nancy saying that, yeah, the aliens, but is it, so That's what if, you know, what if, yeah, what if this encounter, this seafaring, race is elusive you know they they do not want they do not want interaction with the with the land dwellers but occasionally our boats you know offer no choice and they have nothing no other alternative but to ensure that they are not discovered and they take it out the bermuda triangle <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah it could be i mean Straight up, man. It's because you know, like I said, stuff disappears. I mean, what if you know, like I said, these crazy theories. But Dude, what I if, being yeah, what if this is them just saying you're too close? You know, and to us, we're just like, crap, man. There's this triangle where, dude, if it's stormy, do not, you know, do not take your boat out there. What if that's just them saying, you know, you got to quit knocking on our front door? Man, I'm serious. Yeah, I think, man, this is my house. <laughs> I think a, I think a lot of people disappear in the ocean. I mean, and they're never. There's nothing of them ever found. Like, well, it's, it's, dude, it's. 
I'm not saying don't quote me on this as committing murder, but that's the best way to kill somebody, man. Because when you jump in the ocean, nothing you never see the body again. No, I'm talking about, for instance, the people go out, fishermen go out, the boat's never seen, nor they're never seen again. Like, I mean. Well, the good fact is that one just happened here in um, Florida last month or two months ago. The, those two boaters, fishermen. a little late. That was about six months. That was about five months ago. It, it just disappeared. You know, they found their cooler, but, dude, the ocean has so many currents that you get swept up and you lose your navigation. You're screwed. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. So when that's, you know, kind of like the thing is, you know, one of the stories like one of the attributes of mermaids is that they're not predators or not killing people. They're actually, you know, what if, you know, all speculation here, but what if they encountered them and they were taking, they were taken there because the, some of the stories are is that people, you know, up on top, they actually, you know, willingly go with the mermaids. So what if these two were like, Holy crap, this is, you know, a fish woman just popped up on my boat. I'm yours. You know, you know yeah, I, I'm like, you know, you're sitting here, you're going, I got life at home, but this fish woman and this fish man, you know, merfolk just popped up on the boat and said, why don't you come with us? Right. And we're like, yeah. okay. I mean. We, so, we are so, oh man, I'm, 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 what's the word? We are so not innocent that Josh, we're going to look at it. And we're going to look at it and be like. Yeah. That's, that's uh, my thing that I'm talking about. It's just, it's where. What if that's what it is? It's just all of a sudden, boom, here they are. You know, it's like an evolutionary step. Like I said, that they came out of the spring from the sea. Just like you said, evolution. I, I, Josh, I totally agree. Yeah, so I mean, just what if that's the case? I mean, wouldn't that be an it, amazing thing? It happen, man, because it – honestly, if you guys um, – even if they're, they're beautiful women or beautiful men or just – creatures in general and you see something coming to your boat and it's just they obviously i'm not gonna say they don't speak english or they they just you just look at them and you just you're gonna be in awe you're gonna be like uh what is uh, uh, and, uh, and then uh, it could be simple as you fall over because you're amazed or they drag you in or it what? like like or it could be the simple fact you see something that may be a mermaid maybe not but you're so like into it that you fall over the boat and you don't realize it, and you get swept away. It, it can be simple as that, you know. And yeah, no, and that's you know, <laughs> because, like through the research, it doesn't it doesn't really show any like communication. It's kind of like um, you know, we'll kind of we'll kind of go to, you know, we're gonna we'll, we'll kind of bring in Disney in here, you know, like the Little Mermaid. Oh my you know, God. Eric, so, Well, no, that's you know, that's where one of the stories actually comes in. That's where Hans Christian, you know, he comes up with. You know the you know Grimm's fairy tales. That's actually one of the old ones. Like the, you know, Terry just brought up the sirens. There's actually reports that I've said I've never seen reports of like a communication like you and me. Like hey, you know Austin, why don't you come? You know here, why don't you come hang out with us? Yeah. Usually what it is is it's some sailor, some fisherman, someone that's along the sea that hears hears a song, hears you know singing, hears something like this beautiful music coming from somewhere because there's always reports of some sort of musical instrument, something. Yeah, something that draws and, them in. You know, and you you walk up and you see this creature that you know that is reported to have. I mean, you know, ladies picture the most you know handsome guy you've ever seen. Guys picture the most beautiful woman you've ever seen sitting there singing. And I mean, it's not it's not like a scary thing. You're like, what is that? And you go to check it out, and it's it's almost like a hypnot. You know, you're hypnotized. You're 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 drawing in. Yep, just like a movie splash. Yeah, um, that was a that was Matt. That was a documentary, by the way. Well, that's, that's like not a movie. That was a documentary. <laughs> that was an official documentary. So you know, you just need to make sure you give it the credit it's due. <laughs> so. No, but like this thing here. Um, Welcome, Josh. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, this Lori, Lori, rock in the um in the northern. Sorry, the Rhine River in Germany. It's a narrow, um, narrow river, and apparently, back in the folklore of the German side, this beautiful maiden threw herself onto the rock in despair of a faith, faithless lover, um, and then she transformed into a siren. And with her beautiful voice, she just lured these men into the narrow river, and they crashed and they died. You know, it's one of those things. Um, but it started the whole siren thing from the German side, anyway. And Josh, you were correct. You just you keep with us, man. We will be talking about the Mandela effect. We will be talking about CERN. I'm going to be blowing 
Austin's mind. He's just every day. I think I just, yeah. He doesn't see this stuff coming. We're going to be talking about all this stuff. Yeah, it's just, but no, it's, you know, I, oh, crap. you know, it's one of those things. I mean, I just, I look into, you know, just as we keep going to circle, like, you know, Tara brought up the sirens. That comes from Greek mythology in the Romans, where it was believed a siren was a half, half bird, half woman, half male, to where they would, it was a flying creature. You know, so I just, so how, you know, I'm just, I don't know, was it some, you know, was it a tribute, did they just attribute the singing that, other, you know, possibly from a mermaid, merfolk, attribute it to that, they thought, okay, it must just be the, the song of an amazing bird, and they saw this creature, but they didn't attribute it to, you know, seafaring, they attributed it to, you know, because you're looking around, what in our world sings? Birds. Birds, birds so, are fake. Yeah, yeah, bird. Did yeah. you know yeah. that near, nearly so, three, three quarters of the Earth is covered in water? So there's got to be some stuff that we haven't we've seen. We've only discovered time. five to ten percent of it. Yeah. I mean, there's you know the Marianas Trench. That thing is miles down, miles. I mean, these you know you could have an incomplete civilization on here. I mean, we we're discovering life that we didn't even think could exist down there. And we're fine, you know, we're discovering it. And it's one of those things where it's like yeah. I'm 100 team ocean, but mm -hmm. again, I don't want to ruin this earth and ruin the beautiful things that we have because you know, let's say humans are we find these things and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we gotta, like Chris said, we gotta bring them in, we gotta show them off, it's just we gotta leave them to what they are, man. I oh. Oh, Austin, you sound so holistic. You're very holistic. Don't mess with the mermaids. Don't mess with the stuff we I have. I don't know we have, man. We we have some beautiful stuff, man. I'm 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 100 team ocean and team space, and you could be both. But I I I want to explore more, but leave them where they are. You know, we can you videos nowadays is perfect rather than pulling them from where they are and sticking them in an aquarium, you know? Did you guys ever watch the show Sequest? No. Yeah, that was an old show. It was, it was back in 94, 97, it was about three years old. It was basically, it was the same thing. It's like they built a giant, you know, it, it was, think like Star, you know, Star Trek, the Enterprise. Yeah. But this is an underwater version of that. that. That was their thing, was to go and explore the oceans. So it had submersibles and stuff that could go out. I mean, they'd had, you know, so it was, it was a, you know, it was an older show. I mean, obviously they could do so much a better job, you know, so they, and I'm just, I'm reading here. Like what is just, yeah. Uh, it's, embarrassing. You see yeah. that? Well, you're going to see in a second. My um, nanny cakes has seen Sequest before I have, and I am supposed to be <laughs> the team motion. That's embarrassing, man. Well, you got it. <laughs> Awesome. This this show also was out um, a little bit prior to your birth. Sir. That doesn't matter. I mean, I, I, I was talking to her mom. I've watched old black and white war movies, man. I've seen everything, but either way, I, I can watch that now. It's really, yeah, it's it's a cool. It was a cool show. Um, and it's, and I'm yeah, and that's you know, and I that's said cool, you know, Josh, Josh Shelton, it, uh, welcome to the show. You know, uh, so yeah, I saw that. It's just you know in. And that was kind of where he said, like, the, the verge of dehydration, and it would lure him. That's where some of the things, you know, some of the, some of the stories were that merfolk were predatory. That, that, you know, it was their way of luring weak sailors, weak individuals. Because there's many stories. There was one, I believe it was in the British Isles as well, of uh, it was of a landowner that was walking, was walking, saw a mer what you know he saw a woman he thought was drowning on his way down to the river his his servant pulled him back and at that time you know the creature screamed at him and said you know you know you're lucky i would have killed you yeah and swam away so you know and, and kind of like that thing you know what if there are both what if there is a predatory species it, and you know a peace loving one that just wants to you know you know the you know like I said the disney the disneyfication one where it's just it's the seafaring you know that they're just wanting to learn but there's an actual 
more like a nefarious evil side. Yeah, it's you know, the same thing with humans, man. We got good humans and bad humans. There's good guess, and bad and everything. Yeah, I guess like you know, take a dolphin and a shark. Yeah, exactly. both in the same area. One wants to swim with you. One wants to interact with you. One wants to help you. The great white shark, you're looking kind of tasty. I mean, same thing with the great white shark. We just found a picture of a great white shark that's been a, a chunk taken out of it, and the the film and the film industry obviously portrays it in the terrible way, like the Meg. Meg was a, fu- a funny show or TV a movie to watch, but honestly, it's it's out there. You know what I mean? There's there is something out there that's big enough to eat bigger, smaller sharks. Great white is huge, but something's bigger. So I'll throw this out there. You know, I don't. This is my speculation. I don't remember to see this. What if sirens are, you know, the predatory, and mer- mermaids, you know, merman the merfolk, are the more you know, the peaceful, the ones that just want to cohabitate but want to be remain, you know, alone. They don't want to be known. Yeah. You know, and occasionally, you know, we encounter them through things. But these sirens are the ones that are actually the ones that take. Yeah, it, it makes sense. But, you know, so that's, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's crazy. Like I said, it's, it's one of those, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's with anything in cryptology, you know, cryptids. There's no bodies. There's no bones. You'll never find it, man. You'll there's never no, find you know, it. And it's, it's one of those, it's like you believe it, but there's no, you know, so you take somebody, you know, take it like your sister. You know, she's like, mm, you know, I'm just not sure if I really believe it. Well, that's that's the thing is because, unfortunately, well, this is all speculation. This is all something like fantastic. Like, oh, my God, I, you know, I believe it could be there, but I don't have anything where I could take somebody that's a total skeptic and say, you know, you know, this is the evidence you need because I don't have it. And you never will. Like you, yeah. you just told me, you were talking about uh, was it DARPA, the the Navy, in, you know, research. If they find something, they're not going to show you. Oh no. You know, and, and that's what the, the crappy part is: is we'll never know. Well, you think because you know, if we could go to that side, you know, and you know, like, what if it has been discovered? I mean, as you know, and you think like military complex, what would be a better weapon? Than figuring out how to turn a soldier into somebody who wouldn't need an oxygen tank. That's crazy. It, it's happening. Yeah, it's you could happen. alter somebody. Yeah, you know, Matt just brought up, you know, water UFOs. Well, it could be that could be their tech. I mean, we there's been always reports of UFOs that have come out of the water. What if, like the Atlant- Atlanteans, what if this tech still is there? They live underwater, but they still have, you know, it doesn't mean, well, I got to go, I got to go look for the thing. I'm going to go swim with my flippers. Yeah, you know, and this not. I mean, there's a good chance, that, like you said, those reports from ancient Persia, where people like you and me, but they could live underwater. They could be hopping in their jetson style, you know, watercraft and just flying off, flying off. You cruise around the water. Oh man, I don't know, but it's it's one of those things. It's like, why are we wasting our money on stuff like this? Like, are we going to be having underwater fights? You know oh, yeah. what I mean? We have all this technology that can wipe us out in a second with these nukes and whatnot. So why are we tr- – like, I might be wrong, but didn't, wasn't there a story recently about Russia put a um, like a camera or some kind of technology on a, a seal or a whale or something and sent it over to America and they, America's caught it? Was that right? I think so. I'm going to look it up. It may, it may have been a fake story, but I heard like that. It was <laughs> – Yeah, it is. You know, it's like, you know, and, you know, Jesse, Jesse just brought up the thing about, you know, like an apex predator. I mean, that would, you know, just, you know, just throwing that out there. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of wondering if there is, you know, if there is two different versions. You have the one which is the predator, the trickster, the one that actually wants, you know, harmful encounters. And you have the other one that generally just, you know, peace loving. If somebody's in distress. You know, because you always have stories of somebody that's been out to, you know, they should be dead, but all of a sudden they show up. Yeah. In the ocean. I mean, so it's, you know, could those firemen, you know, I mean, what would we say if all of a sudden those those firemen that disappeared showed up when, you know, alive and well? We, you know, where we'd be and like, whoa. Where, where are you we from? Take us where you were. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and this is, you know. Like I said, I mean, it would be cool, but like I said, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, because there's no, unfortunately, there's no evidence. I mean, in my heart, I believe it. I want to believe it, but I don't, I don't know. 
like I said, it's unfortunate. I can't tell you there's any evidence. Unfortunately, when we do all these episodes, we're going to come to the conclusion that we'll never know yeah. um, because it's never going to be shown. But that's the joy of being a conspiracy theorist. I feel like is the the hope of one day we may actually see something, you know, or see some evidence of something, you know. Yeah, it's, you know, Jesse, you're correct. It's like we've we've done more to try to go out of our planet than we have to just look what's, you know, a hundred miles away from where we're just currently sitting. Well, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. It's one of those things that's, I, I believe it's a whole nother conspiracy theory about it. You know, like there is a reason we are not researching what we have on our earth because we're, we're messing it up. So they know that they're trying to find somewhere else to go because we're about to destroy this planet or mother nature is taking this planet back. You know, so I feel like it's gonna. That's what it, it's gonna happen. Yeah, so look on YouTube. Yeah, look on YouTube and watch some of this because that's kind of what it is. See, the Sweet Quest thing was the mission to discover the oceans. So that's what, you know that show. So you know, check that out. But so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start say right now I'm gonna start a GoFundMe for me. Um, and I'm gonna retire hopefully in the next thirty years, and when my kids are grown, I'm gonna go out to sea and just look for mermaids. So I'm going to need a boat. I'm going to need some technology. I'm going to need a crew. So Yeah, we might get a sponsor. We might get a sponsor to buy us a boat so we can go look for mermaids. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I need some, need some money, guys. So I'm going to start a GoFundMe page. And please cool. just donate for 30 years. And maybe yeah, I'll have I'm enough money to read. Right now. Kevin Costner and, and Waterworld. <laughs> I'm, I'm scraggly looking beard guy on a catamaran. <laughs> diving down the water looking for stuff. He's like, ah, I found it. Ah. <laughs> Hey, but t- I'll tell you what, though. On the side of my boat, I'm going to put uh, – what's going on here? My computer. Mermaid, mermaid or bust? Just freak out. Um, I'm going to put on the side of my boat, brought to you by Broad Spirit Care. <laughs> this beard is still looking strong. <laughs> so there we go. But yeah, I'll be so, out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's that's an interesting – you know, before, you know, I was about to wrap it up, but Josh has brought that up. I have heard about that before. Um, that's something I want to bring. Um, I don't know if you guys just saw that comment. The pyramids are watertight. And it's yeah. one of those things. It's, it's, that's, you know, the Egyptian pyramids are a complete mystery. I mean, there's, there's so little known about them. And, you know, there's so little that's wanting to be, you know, known about them, which is also, you know, throws off alarm bells because, they're finding like hidden chambers and they're not want, you know, there's all this, this, all this bureaucratic, you know, bureaucratic stuff that says, no, we can't go in there. Well, why? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. what, would, what could this be for? You know, it's just, you know, there's just, you know, the ancient, you know, cause you have ancient cultures where like pyramids, you've got Egypt, you've got <laughs> over in the Yucatan, you've got all these cultures building the same exact structures. So what, you know, there's gotta be some connection. Between so, these, you know, these areas, the they can't be, you know, random people figuring this out. Yeah, but you know, the Egyptians were smart, man. Honestly, I, I, they are definitely, they knew. Uh, man, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. So it's, you know, with always, you know, like I said, I'm going to try to get a list of different things people want to talk about, you know, wants to yeah, talk I mean, about. We had a lot of comments, Jesse. Yeah. I'm glad, hey, man, haven't talked to you yeah. forever. I'm glad you commenting, Josh. Man, please follow us and like our page yeah. because. You know, a people. lot of information too, man. And maybe we'll bring you on too to talk. This is awesome. You know, every Wednesday we talk about this. So please, man, follow our page. That's awesome. Like, uh, like us, share, find us on Twitter. Yeah, man, it's, we have a lot of comments. It's nice. We have a lot of interaction when it comes to, like we said, man, sports is sports. It's about to end soon. We like doing it because we're sports guys, but this apparently is, is taking off, man. So Sundays we're definitely going to be talking about more about this stuff. Yeah, and you know. You know, speaking of underwater, you know, stuff, you got to get some beard oil in here. Yep, a significant yep. other of yours does not like having a sea urchin on your face. And let it's me not, tell you. Yeah, they want a soft, they want a soft thing to, you know, to hold on to. Like I said, use Kelly you Ross beard, beard oil. You can see it now, man. I'll tell you right yeah. now. Um, in the previous episode, when I was moving, I didn't have my beard oil, didn't have my beard soap. Uh, beard oil, beard soap, and comb, right? And as soon as I found it, my beard instantly, you know, it changed back to normal. It was all scraggly. You can see it now. It's perfect. It feels better. Within two days, I mean, using my oil again, 
it's amazing. I love it, man. I'm so glad to find Kelly Brock, man. He was great. He makes it all natural. He makes it in-house and, you know, Winter Garden. Come by the Winter Garden Farmer's Market. I think his brother goes to Orlando Farmer's Market sometimes, but BrotsBeardCare.com, Instagram at BrotsBeardCare. Dude, he's absolutely amazing. You know, and if you want to lure a mermaid out of the water, you go to the ocean with a nanny cake. Yeah. Oh my God. That's how you lure. That's how they lure me into the water. I'm surprised I haven't crashed into the narrow river yet, man. That, that was a terrible segue. Let's I see, but listen, no, but listen. The only that reason terrible. that, that <laughs> Danny cakes she look, her cakes lure me into the water, but I'm just so big, you know, fat that I, I get stuck, so I can't get through, so they can never catch me. But no, no, no. man, Danny cakes is killing it right now. She she's been doing it before I was born, you know. Um, and she quit for a while, but she started back up a couple of years, about ten years ago. And man, it's delicious. Anything you can think of, she'll make it. She's expanded her um her everything. She used to do her, her fondant is absolutely amazing. Her cake amazing. Great. Her work every time she sends me a new cake, and I'm looking at it going, How did you do that? You know, like she's she's every day it gets better and better, man. So please follow her on Instagram, nancy.b.burke. Um, her phone number is right there, 407-923-2898. She does wedding cakes, birthday cakes, cupcakes, cook, um, not cookies, I'm sorry, but cupcakes, regular cakes, any occasion, man, it, it's awesome. And she, and she delivers. She I'm delivers. So my peach chupa cobbler. Yeah, man, yeah, nanny cakes, we need that peach chupa cobbler, please. I'm waiting on that. <laughs> but that it's, you know, it's as if always, you know, I like said, you said you're going to, you know, Josh, you're going to look up brats. Let them know yeah. you saw us, mention three beer, you know podcast you're going to get a discount on anything you buy same way and any cakes. let her let her know that you saw us here you know whoever you were you know, refer if you find somebody else that needs one same thing they're going to get a discount off this but as always joe appreciate everybody check us out on threebeardspodcast.com like us on facebook share us please get the word out the more people we have engaging the more questions we can answer jesse yeah. josh pleasure answering your questions matt tara Thanks for watching, Nancy. As always, thank you so much. And gentlemen, see you Good Sunday. Good night. See you Sunday.